All right, uh, doing a search here on uh, YouTube for Burger Planet. Okay, there we got the uh, the crash yesterday, streamed one day ago, live Lakewood I-70 crash. Look at that, Burger Planet, on Burger Planet's edits channel, he puts uh, an interview with him and Anderson Cooper. Uh, also on his edits channel, he has um, the interview there with Fox 31 right after the crash there in Denver. And then we have some more from Burger Planet on uh, his interview with the guy who went in to re help rescue some of the folks injured in the crash. And a late night burger stream. And then we've got more of that. I guess that's just, yeah. And then we've got the Stream Machine. Never heard of them before. Uh, Fox interviews Burger Planet after the crash. We've got uh, a gaming channel. A gaming channel. 40,000 views of Burger Planet's video there. Uh, we got uh, USA Today. Uh, YouTuber captures moment just before impact fiery Denver crash. CBS Denver. We got Nine News, which is another. These are these are uh, videos that mention Burger Planet. I guess that's because that's that's why they came up in the search. And uh, more there from Denver Seven. Uh, Burger Pl Okay, duh. Who, who's that idiot? Camo Dave. Anyway, um, Burger Planet almost hit by truck Fox News interview. Uh, IRL moments. Okay, so there's a lot of videos out there. There's even more videos than are sh that we sh than are shown there. There's Good Morning America doing burger. There's uh, he was on I believe the Today Show. I saw NBC News last night with uh, they showed the clip with Burger Planet. In. So on his main channel here, Burger Planet, he just has the two videos up. Basically, the live stream where he witnessed the crash and the one post crash. Okay, then on his Burger Planet edits channel. We get the Anderson Cooper interview, the Inside Edition coverage, the Good Morning America coverage, and a few other things. So, you know, I think, you know, witnessing, you know, this horrible tragedy, you know, Bur Burger Planet, you could say, was in the right place at the right time. You know, he, he luckily he wasn't any further up in that, you know, he was in a traffic jam on I-70 in Denver when that truck shot past him going like 80 miles an hour down the emergency lane and then somehow crashed into vehicles and blew up and caused a horrible accident that was sent all over the I'm, I'm sure even you went to Europe or Australia there was probably coverage of that uh, very sad very tragic and just strange that he was right there now if he had been any closer he might have gotten seriously injured or worse uh, you know if he had traveled that road 20 minutes earlier or 10 minutes earlier he would have just sailed right through and never seen it um you know or if he traveled on a different day it'd be a whole different situation it's just you know r the right at the right place and yeah it's scary it is scary it's scary and weird how fate does stuff like that and uh yeah but from what i'm seeing i'm looking at burger's channel i'm looking at what Berger did, you know, obviously he did a lot of interviews, okay, yesterday. He was interviewed by just about everybody who's anybody in the news business because he witnessed the actual truck going by and actually filmed it, okay. The film, even though it's not film, it's not even taped, it's digital, but you call it filming, okay. And he'll probably have to come back to Denver sometime in the future when there's all these court cases and lawsuits. There's going to be a myriad of them. And, uh, yeah, so, he, you know, he's the guy who actually has evidence of, at least some e sketchy evidence of what actually happened to cause that horrible crash. And then if we look at the news coverage there from Fox 31 in Denver, Saturday morning, the driver has been arrested. There's video that shows a semi-trailer out of control in the mountains just ahead of the fiery crash. Was that the, the truck that this guy was driving? Was he already weaving around the road uh, minutes before the crash? Uh, they finally reopened I-70. Took him uh, two days to get the road back in shape after the horrible crash. Four people were killed in the crash, which involved 28 vehicles and at least six, I guess, six other people were injured. And, uh, yeah, they still have a link to the uh, Burger Planet video there.
and that's the driver, 23-year-old man from Houston, arrested and charged with multiple vehicular homicide uh, charges there. So, I don't know, man. <clears throat> you know, the, the one thing you got to realize, too, the one thing you got to realize, too, is that, you know, I, where do you go from reporting the news, doing the public service, informing people to overhyping something? And, you know, and yeah, you know, I think we're at that point now where, okay, yesterday was the day where everybody talked about this. And, you know, the interviews with uh, Josh McCutcheon, a.k.a. Burger Planet, were all over the place. And, you know, I think, you know, he stayed, in, obviously stayed in Denver for the day and, filled everybody in. And he did. He did mention his channel, that he's a YouTuber and he's got Burger Planet channel. He did that. So, you know, hey, you know, that's just the way it works these days. But I think now we're at a point now, where, okay, now this is going to, you know, people have to heal. Uh, funerals have to be held. Uh, people are going to obviously need psychological counseling, maybe even Burger. I mean, what a horrible thing to witness. You know, P PTSD is a very real possibility. It's going to be interesting how Berger handles this. Um, will this change his life? Will this make him think differently about YouTube and traveling around? Will it? I don't know. It's going to be interesting. You, this is a life-changing kind of a thing. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this affects everybody, you know. Um, it's weird because, yeah, as I said, if he was 10 minutes earlier on this highway... You know, he would have just zipped right through it and been on the other side of Denver when this happened, and he would have just probably continued on his way back to Indiana. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how this affects Josh. Let's call him Josh, because that's his real name, right? Burger. And, uh, yeah. I, I still am amazed 15-year-olds can legally drive. 15-year-old driver. Oh, my. And that's the man Burger interviewed there. Uh, panhandling on uh, near I-70, rest to save people from the crash. And of course, uh, wow. Wow. All right. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I worked at newspapers uh, for about a decade after I graduated college. I graduated college with a communication arts degree. And I don't consider myself a journalist. I never liked that term. Uh, it's like you have a card and somebody, you know, gives you, oh, you're in the journalist club. I don't like that term. Uh, I just work in, worked in the news business, and I did cover a lot of events that were, that, that were very um, heartbreaking. You know, I covered fires. I, I covered murder cases. I covered shootings. I covered many car accidents. You know, that was a big thing in our newspaper. You know, cover a car accident, put the big car accident picture on the front page. It sold extra newspapers. When we had a car accident with a smashed car hitting a tree or another car and a couple fatalities there, and we had that splashed across the front page of the newspaper. It did sell extra papers. When we had a huge house fire where somebody lost their life or lost their all their whole all their possessions, we had a giant uh, natural gas explosion once on a pipeline, and it you know didn't I think it did kill somebody who worked at the plant, but um, you know it just shot up in the air and and you know again all those tragedy things storms. Uh, murder cases, court cases involving children, pets, whatever. Yeah, we would put that on the front page and we would sell newspapers. And you got to get to a point where, you know, uh, you're saying to yourself, you know, you know, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with profiting off of other people's misfortunes. And and you can see that in this Burger Planet thing where, you know, yes, it is an opportunity for him to get better known, to to mention his YouTube channel, and I'm not faulting him for that. It is part of the record. He's a YouTuber. He has a channel, and it was part of the story, and you mention that, and you kind of cringe a little bit. Okay, Burger Planet, yes, I have a YouTube channel. You know, you know what I'm saying? Josh McCutcheon. Um, and you do cringe a little bit, but it is part of the story. And, you know, and, and I guess the point is don't overhype it. And where do you get to that point where you're overhyping it? Yes, when there's a car crash, if the next day's paper you continue harping on the car crash and using it for views, maybe it's not a good thing. And the same thing with this. Okay, we've got the day after all the interviews, Burger Planet. Now what does he do, you know? get back in his car, get back on his way to Indiana to continue with his life. 
make some changes I, where he's going? I don't know. Um, yeah, well, are people still going to be calling him today for interviews? Uh, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see where this all goes and plays out. Uh, obviously, the news media is moving on to other stories. The news media in Denver is starting to move on to other stories. The sad thing, I guess, the truly sad thing, other than the people that have lost their lives and their families that have to deal with that, is the folks that were injured in this crash. They're going to be, you know, they could permanently have permanent disabilities that affect them the rest of their lives. And they're not going to be, have, you know, getting news coverage for that, right? Some guy who lost his leg or, or broke his back or has burns, that may affect him or her for the rest of their life life and everybody's going to move on and oh yeah you remember that big horrible crash on i-70 10 years ago some there are going to be people out there that are going to be still suffering the effects of that for the rest of their lives and the media is not going to be there to cover them and they're going to probably suffer in, in silence in a lot of cases and it's going to be said a lot of tragedy from this it was very interesting to see burger planet there and and uh, you know thankfully he wasn't hurt you know, uh, he, he really, that, car, that truck could have smashed into him or he could have been a couple cars ahead and gotten part of the, you know, when the thing exploded. You know, it's, it's really scary and uh, how close you come to fate sometimes in life. You know, we've all had that, haven't we? If you've been driving a car for a number of years, you, most everybody's had that really close call. Who? You know, there was a time I was pulling up on a four-lane road. I had a red light. The light turned green. I decided to, you know, I was going forward, and I looked to my left, and there was a car with a bunch of kids in it that was speeding about 80 miles an hour down the road, coming and charging right through the intersection, ignoring their red light, my green light. I jammed on my brakes, and I must have missed hitting that car, or they must have missed hitting me by about an inch and a half, you know? And I just think if I had just pulled out another, or hit that brake another split second later than I did, who knows what would have happened? But, you know, if you, everybody has that. I know every, if you've been driving for a couple of years, everybody's got their close call. Berger had one the other day, and we're glad that he's um, alive and well and uh, can get on with his life as best he can. All right, folks, I just want to do a quick update on what was going on yesterday. It was kind of an interesting day here at the bottom of YouTube, and and uh, all our best to Berger, and uh, hope he... Uh, makes it back to Indiana okay and uh, and does what he wants to do with the rest of his life because at least he's got that opportunity to do it. All right, folks. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget I'm going to be doing my Camo Dave live stream uh, Saturday at 9.30, which is in a little while, a.m. Eastern Time. And I also I think I'm going to do an evening one too at about 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. So uh, join me for that. Hey, thank you very much for watching my channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And uh, hey, yeah, that's it. All right, folks, vlog under.